It's five degrees in here, and everybody says in the comments to just layer up, and you can't miss chest day. So let's see how it goes. Oh, there's gotta be a better way. I probably don't need to convince you of the importance of heating and cooling your gym. If you've worked out when it's 30 or when it's above 90 with some humidity, well, you clicked the video. So in this one, we're gonna cover a lot of options for heating and cooling your gym, which in turn is going to protect your equipment and allow you to do less maintenance on it. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but it's gonna cover enough options to inform you before you get bored out of your mind. If you want the longer, less exciting version, you can head over to our website at gluxgym.com. And now for my professional advice. Glux Gym assumes no responsibility if you foolishly adhere to their unprofessional and likely incompetent advice. Over the past year and a half in this space, I've tried out a lot of solutions. I've used two different dehumidifiers, an industrial size fan, and two infrared heaters. And now I'm at my current solution, which is a ductless mini split. Now I'm going to try to quickly and thoroughly cover various ways that you should be able to cool and heat your space based on your climate. I don't wanna insult you with some of the blog advice I've read out there. Things like open the doors to let some air flow or pick the best time of day to work out. Not when it's too hot or too cold and put some clothes on when it's cold out so you don't get chilly. I'm pretty sure we've all done those things, but unless you can get some good insulation, the effects of whatever solution you pick are going to be negligible. It's not exciting or sexy to talk about, but it's necessary. So in no particular order, I'm gonna cover a few of the things I've done in this gym, starting with insulating the garage door. Now, there are a lot of ways to do this and the kits are fairly cheap and pretty simple to install. You can go with foam panels. The better kits will have a foil reflective layer and you wanna get the highest R value that you can afford and that will fit, but realize there's a diminishing returns on insulation as the R value grows. So don't go crazy overspending there. Now, they also have radiant reflective foil barriers, oh, that's a mouthful, where they essentially put bubble wrap between layers of reflective material. And there's fiberglass panels with a vinyl facing like these from Owens Corning that can work as well. And if you have any gaps in your insulation, you wanna fill those as well. For example, for me, this was completely bare. It was just the exterior sheathing. So I got reclaimed two and a half inch poly iso sheets, and then I cut them to fit and sealed them with 3M tape. Well, Winnie did all the taping. It would just get stuck to my fingers and I would just swear constantly. I used the same process for the ceiling, we all know heat rises, so I just stack the layers to get a higher R value. You can use fiberglass, spray foam, whatever. Then you can spend some really exciting time checking for gaps in your seals. Now these doors are a little different than normal garages and basements. They're built out and then I fill them with insulation and then seal it all up. But you wanna check underneath for gaps, check your weather stripping around your doors and check your garage door bottom seal. It's really easy to replace and fix if it's an issue. And simple things like adding flooring will make it feel like your concrete is not 11 degrees. Now we gotta get in to the fancy stuff. Before you purchase and install one of these options we're about to talk about, you probably need to calculate the BTUs. Now a lot of fancy science and math goes into properly calculating those. Your primitive intellect wouldn't understand alloys and compositions and things with molecular structures in the... So instead of doing any of that, we're just gonna look at this chart. Ooh. Now your unit size, is going to depend on your insulation, your climate zone, and the size of your space. Now, I wouldn't go too crazy worrying about calculating it. There's a lot of online calculators and resources that will help you out. If you're just looking to dehumidify your space, you don't wanna run your larger solution, like I don't wanna run my mini split 24 seven or in the spring where it's not really needed. I tried this smaller dehumidifier from VAC Plus. It's a 30 pint, it was one of the highest rated on Amazon, and I ran it in my garage, and now 24 seven in my basement, and it works really well. Now, I did upgrade to a 50 pint unit from Home Labs, which covers 45 500 square feet, though they have different sizes. Now this thing is an absolute monster. It works great, but it's a big boy and it can kick a lot of heat while it's burning away that humidity. But I used it when I noticed my things rusting in here and when things weren't particularly well sealed up and the air and the moisture would just flow back in. Now let's take a look at some of your options for heating your space. I'm not gonna spend any time explaining to you how to layer up so you can work out when it's cold. I'm pretty sure you can dress yourself. Plus, I can't make any money off that unless it was Winnie modeling it. And on this channel, I've probably talked about gripping that cold hard shaft long enough for at least a little while. 
So we're gonna cover three categories of options on how to warm up your space. Starting with infrared, which is going to, again, avoiding any fancy science, it's gonna warm up your objects rather than the air. And I used to aim it at my power rack and my barbell so it wasn't so cold when I was working out in that one space. And I own two of these from Dr. Infrared. I have the version with the humidifier and oscillation. The oscillation's fine. The humidifier I've never used. And I also have the Dr. 968, which doesn't have that extra junk. They're well made and they work good. When I had them both running, I could get about 15 degrees out of them. But honestly, they're too small for this large of a space. So I didn't want to upgrade to a larger infrared option, knowing I was going to upgrade later on down the road. One of the nicest things about them, besides the fact that you can just plug it into a normal socket, is they're perfectly safe. I can leave it on, I can forget it, I can kick it over, and I will live. I'll be perfectly fine. And they're also fairly efficient. Now from there, you can look at electric heaters like this one we use at our family farm and some of our side rooms from Fahrenheit. It's 17,000 BTUs, runs from 25,000 to 5,000 watts. The downside is you'll probably have to do some wiring for these. This one's 220 volts. Now there are smaller ones that you can plug in, but then you're kind of going down to that smaller size like that Dr. Infrared. Now, there are cheaper ones as well, but I'm a little leery of strapping $100 to my ceiling with the amount of heat these things produce. From there, you can go to a forced air solution like this one from Dynaglobe. We use these at our family farm to warm up barns, so they kick off some serious heat, though those ones run up diesel and they're quite a bit larger. They actually kind of look like rockets. They do require ventilation and some thoughts on safety. It's an open flame, and that was never going to work here with my son. Now let's talk about your options for cooling. Another thing I learned from blogs is that you can use a fan to move air around and cool you. I had no idea. So first I tried attaching something to my dog's tail because that wag is vicious, but she wouldn't sit still. So I went and got an industrial fan from Air King. Mine's a wall mount, it's 30 inches and it oscillates. And they have a ton of options for how you wanna mount it and your preferred size. Now, if you don't wanna commit that hard, you can just go get any smaller fan like this one from Drio, or literally anything, it's just a fan. Now, you can try evaporative coolers, but I can't use those here for a few reasons. The New England climate has a lot of humidity, and even though they're more energy efficient and cheaper, I don't wanna introduce more humidity into the environment of my gym. And then you have air conditioners, and obviously, if they work for your house, they'll work for your garage, your basement, or whatever space you're using. Though they use a lot of power, you do have to drain the condensation, and they need an exhaust. And here, I don't don't have any functional windows and I wasn't willing to punch a hole through the wall for something that I knew wasn't the ultimate solution. I'm sick and tired people telling me I can put a sweater on when I film. I didn't build a home gym so that I could be the biggest guy in here just to cover up these arms. A split unit with a heat pump is your most expensive option. I used all my YouTube money on it and I'm still a few thousand dollars short but it is your most efficient and quietest solution. It can heat and cool and I can run it while I'm filming because it's nearly silent. It's 85 degrees outside and I only have it set to dehumidify right now and it's 15 degrees cooler here. And I still need to finish insulating and sealing things up in here. It took about two hours to install, but I have to say I have some friends who are professionals, so I was mostly a pretty face. And that's not counting electrical, which I don't love doing, but I did discover a family of bats living in my attic, so that's cool. It's essentially a compressor on the outside and a head unit on the inside. Now, I installed this unit from Mitsubishi, which isn't cheap, but it's amazing, and I kinda got talked into it. Now, originally, I wanted to do a DIY solution, and there are companies out there that make these units for people like us who wanna do it ourselves when you don't have professional friends. This run from Mr. Cool was my top choice. It runs from 12 to 36,000 BTUs. It's got Wi-Fi, so it works with your phone, and they're really highly rated. Now, my unit uses about as much electricity as one of those infrared heaters that I was using in the winter time to heat this place. Let me know in the comments what I missed and what you're using at home for your solution to heat and cool your space because there's a lot out there. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you next week.